Many years ago, my buddy Randy Hilberg suggested that I check out the Facebook group for the Triton site and little did I know that that little suggestion was going to get me into a whole Triton makeover. So I have a Triton 2000 TR21 that is going to be made over and I am really excited about it. I have two very special people to thank and that is Don Yeremy and Jeff Tunks at Tritown Tool in Cambridge as they have done a lot of work to help me get the boat to where it is and I really appreciate their time and expertise. Although this makeover is specific to Triton, there are many other Facebook groups for different boats and different manufacturers. So they will have suggestions for you and if there is not one available you could always start a Facebook group and get lots of suggestions and take advantage of the expertise that is out there. People are willing to share and help and the Triton site has been great. I truly do appreciate it so thank you to all of those who have given suggestions along the way. As always if you find this video helpful or enjoyable a like share or subscribe is always appreciated. Hard to believe this boat is a 2000 Triton TR21. There's been a lot of upgrades here and it's been a lot of work, but it's been a great retirement project and I'm pretty proud of the it. The additions to this boat is a keel guard. Uh, I had a little hole above the eye of the roller and I needed to fix it. So we ended up with a keel guard. Here's a little different angle of the keel guard. And I do want to stress that I did mention there was a hole it was approximately about here and it was patched and done properly so that I didn't get the keel guard to simply cover up the hole. It was repaired and I just figured while I was at it, I was going to reinforce it and make it stronger. So the keel guard here is not only protecting this, but it is going down the hull here. I have watched several installation videos and the one thing that I did notice that a lot of the installs they didn't stress the point of putting a, a bead all around here uh, the keel guard itself has a really strong adhesive but they do recommend putting a bead and we used 3m 4200 or you could use 5200 i had 4200 and it's a good strong adhesive bead so make sure that you put that adhesive bead around there as well and that is going to reinforce the adhesiveness of the keel guard to the hull. The bead of 4200 that I used is going all the way around the perimeter of the keel guard and that is what is really going to seal it in. So make sure that you follow the instructions and don't forget that bead. It's a really important step. When I first got this boat, it had two 5-inch graphs, an X55 at the front and an LMS 160 at the dash. Boy, things have changed. Got an Ultrax on here, which is amazing, with a built-in mega down imaging transducer. And no longer are we with a 5-inch graph. We are with two Helix 12s. There's a recessed foot pedal which was an addition that's always an adventure cutting into the deck of your boat but uh, well worth it here's the built-in mega down imaging transducer on my ultrex you'll notice no cables running on the outside of the shaft they run through the shaft which makes for a nice clean install a custom mount for the two helix 12s made by jeff tunks at tritown tool in cambridge which is a super sturdy mount that I love. The Humminbird Mega 360 has become an important tool in my fishing success. E-locks on the Ultrex and the Helix units are another additional safety. The nose of my Triton digs down so I've added a wedge underneath the Ultrex and you can see it underneath here and what it does is it levels out the trolling motor so that I get a better image when I am looking at my 2D trying to get readings underneath the boat. The wedge is higher at this end 
And what that does, it actually lifts the trolling motor so it's sitting up higher at the front. So as you come down towards the motor, the head of the motor is actually lower, which, make, which makes it fit under the tarp better. The wedge gets thinner as you go towards the back. And you can see over here that there was an old hole here for where the trolling motor was mounted, plus another one here. And basically these were covered up. And what that did was it allowed us to shift the motor in. So if you look at the gunnel of the boat, the trolling motor is basically in line with the gunnel. And again, that's going to make it much easier to put the tarp on. And you'll see the tarp at the end of the video that it fits really well with a modification as well. All right, so let's take a little closer look at the wedge. So right now, the pencil is coming towards the back of the wedge. And if you look carefully, you can see the shroud of the bow panel. Here's my switch. Uh, you can see the trolling motor plug-in over there to give you a reference point. So now, because we left the wedge at about half an inch and we can customize it to whatever length we wanted we now took the wedge and we angled it towards the front of the boat at about a 45 degree angle and so therefore it did not interfere with the shroud that way we were able to shift the head of the trolling motor in closer to the gunnel so that it wasn't sticking way out causing the problems with the tarp therefore it made tarping much better from two viewpoints. The trolling motor head was lower and also the trolling motor is facing more inside the boat than out, so it makes it way better. We have an amp bow panel, which uh, replaced the old wood grain, which was disintegrating and falling apart, so that was a great addition. This troll lock is a great addition and works very well. It locks it in super tight and I would recommend it. The Troll Tamer is made by RMC Boatworks and basically what it is, it's a little lever here and this lever releases it. So if you push this lever and pull on your cord, it's just a little awkward here, then up it goes, right? And so now when you go to lock it in, you just basically lower it down and it is locked in. Once it's locked in, it stabilizes the trolling motor so there is no more bouncing up and down. The Triton never came with a safety chain, so once again, this was an addition, an important addition for safety reasons, so that if the strap ever broke, I do have a catch safety. When the actuator was replaced over here for the brake system, I also got the upgraded safety chains, which are black coated and they are super nice. Any of you that remember those wire cables that used to have little needle-like extensions on there that would always uh, cut into your fingers, that was no fun. So this was definitely a very nice upgrade when the actuator was replaced. I would like to add an additional thank you to Matt Kelly from Top Gear Automotive. He was a huge help in replacing the actuator system and bleeding the brakes on the trailer. That was very, very much appreciated. Matt also helped with replacing some of my pumps and resealing them. And that was a, another huge help as well as some help with the seat install. So once again, thank you very much, Matt, for all your help. A little screw eye just underneath the seat. You can see it right there to hang a towel is a cool little addition as well. I added in some Cook's storage hooks. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but they're made by Cook's and they're pretty cool. Just don't overweight too much stuff on them. They are made of plastic, so that was a very cool addition. I have those in my front compartment as well as my rod lockers holding bait, so very nice addition. addition to the rod buckle, which on rare, rare occasions does pop off. I also have a strap up there as an added measure of security on those long runs. Over here is the mount for my locker bar. It's a custom one done by Tritown Tool and is a very important safety feature to avoid anybody getting into these front four compartments when I'm away from home. 
I mentioned earlier about the locker bar and you saw the silver pieces that mount into the side of the boat. Well, when you now see the locker bar installed, you can see that it not only protects the compartment here, it com protects the compartment here, and it also protects both rod lockers. Again, it's great peace of mind when you're traveling and obviously a good lock in place is super helpful too. Two Humminbird Helix 12s is a far cry from the old LMS 160 that used to be in here. Got a ram swing arm mount. It is a very sturdy mount and I'm very happy with it. We have an amp control panel, which is much better than the old wood grain one that used to be there and underneath my helix 12s you can see that there is another amp panel under there which again is much sturdier it doesn't than look old. like much but there was a lot of work going into bracing the mount behind this helix 12 at the console and again thanks to jeff tunks at tritown tool in cambridge it's super sturdy the gauges were the only things holding the panel in so therefore the aluminum piece you can see was set in there to act as a strong brace by Jeff at Tritown Tool. On the control panel you have a switch that is for the box and the floor so if I flip this the interior lights are going to come on in the boxes and they will all come on except for the one that is in the battery compartment which is on an independent switch. LED lighting was added to all the compartments with the strip light. The little silver light in the corner was just a temporary one. Basically, it's a pretty simple job. Just took the wires from the old interior light, which you see in the black and white there, and then just rewired, drilled a little hole up there, and stuck them on. And that's pretty much it. And uh, they are wired into the switch. They work great and I would recommend doing that. As you can see, it's pretty darn dark in here right now, so I'm about to flip that box floor switch, so I am going to just pop that now, and again, you can see how much light you got light in each of the rod lockers. You got a light in the front compartment. There's a light in that one there that's closed too, and I just have it closed so you can get a better overview. And swinging around to the back, there is the passenger back compartment. And over here is the starboard driver side compartment. All lit, all on one switch, super convenient and it works great. Believe it or not, this is the old wood grain panel, simply scuffed up and sanded and then basically some bed liner paint and there you go it uh, matches the new decor the seats were redone at quality manufacturing plus and they were basically just recovered and i got the matching seats at the back and i'm not sure if you can see it or not but we got the matching ones were also added to the live wells to ensure that there's more oxygen in there the vents had a sharp edge to them on the inside so a little pool noodle technology solved that problem therefore less damaging to the fish. I have 531 batteries in there so we didn't have a lot of room to mount the chargers so they ended up on the bottom of the lid. Certainly not an ideal place but it works. The reason is not recommended to put chargers on the lid is that there are gases released while the battery is being charged. My batteries are charged the vast majority of the time in my garage so the lid is always open and even if i'm away i will prop the compartment open so that gases are not being contained in there so as i said earlier it's not an ideal spot but if you're conscientious you can make it work as i have done here you can't forget the minkota plugins for the extension cord for the chargers that you saw on the lid earlier i have one on the starboard side and I have one on the port side, so when I have to charge the boat, it's plug in, plug in, and away I go. Simple, quick, and easy. The strut was added in here, 
and that helps keep the lid open and also I had to replace the other struts in my Triton as well because they simply got old and worn out. Added in here was a, another LED light and this is on the on off switch that you see in the bottom right hand corner and that is just because I wanted it independent of the accessory switch because I use it often in the back compartment. I talked earlier about adding an on off switch right here. Um, it's right beside the flow right. I know it's hard to see because it is dark basically now and it is very light because of this LED light. Before there was only one tiny little black and white light and there was no way it would provide enough light to do anything back here. So it is dark now so I'm just going to flip the switch and you can see that it's totally dark and once you flip it back on you have lots of light and even in the daylight that extra light if you're working on pumps or anything is a tremendous advantage so I would highly recommend it. And just pulling back a bit, you can see that that LED light goes right across the back. So that is a super handy addition for your boat. Also added in was the Flowrite remote drain plug. This is the six foot version and it saves crawling under the boat. And those of you that know what I mean and have maybe ruined the odd pair of pants by putting a hole in the knees, then you will really appreciate this one. It uh, is very easy, very convenient. You just simply turn it to put the plug in and turn it to put the plug out. And that's all there is to it. Here's the flow right. And you can see that it's mounted just above the batteries on a small aluminum plate made from Tritown as well. And you can just see as I turn it in here that it's simply held in by two screws and that's it. It's just a simple little plate. The flow right is very lightweight, so you don't need more than that. This little plate is a much simpler option than drilling through the fiberglass. Some people have them remotely out here in the splash well, but it's nice and convenient right here as well. And obviously way simpler than drilling through fiberglass. Uh, that's not a project that I wanted to venture into. The flow right is obviously designed for a drain plug and the little arrow indicator indicates the position and you can see underneath it says out. When I turn it in, there's gonna be a little click that locks it into place and it's gonna sound something like this. All right, I'm here underneath the boat and this is the flow right plug. It's got a little o-ring on it that you should keep lubricated and as the plug is turned in you will see that it locks in so if you can turn that in now please and it locks in there's a little click and it's snap and then if you turn it out the plug comes out no need for crawling under the boat anymore my buddy don yeremy added in this on off switch which is great and super convenient so that was a big help as well Right next to the on-off switch are two big terminal collectors and my buddy Don again helped me with these because he's definitely the electrical guy and uh, very helpful in that regard. So he basically has taken all of the connections and you can see that my connections are minimal here and basically just a couple of jumper cables and the the battery charger here. Also running two 31 series batteries. Recently, Gussie did a video on hooking them up in parallel and getting nice clear electronics readings. And I've been doing this for a couple of years and it works great and I never worry about running out of power. Not sure how well you can see them, but once again, Jeff Tunks at Tritown Tool in Cambridge added in aluminum trays so that the two batteries sit side by side with one strap, therefore making more space for the batteries. The oil tank had to be moved to make more room. So it used to be over here where the batteries were, but now it's over here. And it used to be a remote oil fill, but now I simply fill it in there. Uh, the remote oil fill didn't work great at the best of times, so that's what I did. Also running a 36 volt system, so instead of my prop here, I have the third battery and I have underneath all that stuff, you can't see, but anyways, uh, I have another custom aluminum tray 
for the two batteries over there for my 36 volt system. Here's a quick overview of the oil tank and the batteries and it's the battery is running from the front to the back of the boat. If I zoom down in you can see another custom aluminum tray and it's obviously a single and over here this is for the trolling motors you can see that there is a split in the batteries that they're sitting side by side but it is one aluminum tray for the two batteries which makes it really convenient in terms of size you don't have to deal with two battery trays so it makes it much easier to get 31 series batteries in there and once again those custom aluminum trays you can see that there's a little lip in there there's also a little curled under plate to screw those aluminum trays into the bottom of the boat to add extra security and obviously they are strapped on top and they are strapped together and that's basically it the carpet is still the original from my 2000 triton tr21 charcoal is a great color i highly recommend it and looking over it you can see why i'm a little hesitant to change it and i'm just going to go to the back here so you can see that uh, the carpet back here is still in really good shape as well so that is why i am not getting into that big project as of yet i have some rod holders here that are used for walleye fishing or occasionally bass fishing just sometimes you need a place to put the rod down Here's one of the rod holders in place, just for your curiosity. I do prefer the Canon dual access rod holders for the majority of my walleye fishing, especially when we're in my brother's boat, which is much better suited than a bass boat. One of the things I do like to do is add a little protection for the Mega 360 when I am trailering under the tarp. And this is the spinning part of the Mega 360, which gives you your rotational 360 degree image so it, this is the transducer and again just to protect it from you know wear and tear under the tarp i simply take a little bag and i take some cloth with like which i got right over here and there's my protective cloth which is basically going to protect this and then I'm going to take a couple of just Berkley cinch bungees and I'm going to lock the bag on and that is going to keep the transducer protected. To use the cinches properly, it is pretty simple. All you're going to do is you're going to take the one cinch and you're going to wrap it around and I snug it up here. And so now I have the knob of the cinch here and I simply put it in. There's a sliding little thing and that not is it into place and then I'm going to take my second one and again same thing I just wrap it around push the elastic over cinch it into place and that locks it in and therefore you got the protection so that there's no wearing against cover you got that nice soft cloth inside it's time to tarp the boat up and you can see the modification of the tarp the bag is in place for the mega 360 coming back here you can see the back pedestal has been shifted to the front and then I put the seat in and that just seems to be the right height to get good protection from the cover and the rain draining off. And coming back here, you get just another perspective of the boat from the starboard side. And coming over here, you can see that I had a couple of holes here from old GPS pucks and things like that. So my buddy Don made a couple of round discs out of white uh, ultra high molecular board, I believe, and they covered up nicely and blend in. The little seashell cover for the wiring just to prettify things. And coming back here, the seat is now placed in the hole without the back pedestal, which is in the front, and now it's ready to tarp. This is the original cover and it is in great shape. I have been fortunate enough to have this boat stored in a garage for almost its entire life. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, how on earth did you get 
that cover to fit with an Ultrex on there. And I started with a shorter 42 inch shaft, then because I fished the Great Lakes a lot to a 52 inch shaft. So I'm gonna come up a little closer here and starting right here where my finger is, we're gonna follow along. You're gonna see a triangle shape. So along the bottom, it's straight. And then I'm coming up here and I'm coming up to the top of the triangle, coming down here. And there's the end of the triangle and following it back down this way coming back to the front is the base of the triangle so as i back out you should be able to see that triangular piece and that was an addition to the fabric which allowed me to get the ultrex in there the triangular piece was added at gary's custom marine in cambridge ontario while the boat was in at Gary's, the strapping was starting to fray where it goes around the trailer down here. Gary had an idea. Instead of making this a single buckle system, it is now a double buckle system. And what that does is it allows you, if you have fraying down here, you simply just replace the strapping. The top part is now independent. If I take this clip off, the strapping goes through this clip. And if I take the other clip off, there's just the strapping that you need. This piece here, which would be more expensive to fix, is independent and always protected. So that is a great tip for maintaining the strapping on your cover. The rope that is inside the tarp which basically tightens it all the way around the boat we put a ring on the end of here and coming around the motor we put a ring on here as well what that allows me to do is take a rope ratchet strap and secure the ropes together the rope ratchet strap is now in place the hook is put through the eye. Use the heavier duty ratchet straps. I started with some lighter ones and I found they loosened off. When I got to the heavier duty one, it worked a lot better. So now I'm going to take the rope ratchet strap and I simply am going to pull on the tag in and I'm gonna pull it so it's nice and snug. And you can see that everything is tightened up and that's basically all there is to it. All you have to do at this point is just tie off the loose end of the rope and you're done. Changing the taillights to LEDs was a really good move. The old ones were a pain in the butt to get in and out. If you have one of the old ones, you know what I mean. That's a wrap on the Triton makeover. I am very proud of this 2000 Triton and it is getting ridiculously expensive out there to get a new boat so take care of the ones you have and you should be able to improve the quality of your boat and get it to a point where you are very proud of your boat i know i am certainly proud of this one as always a like share subscribe is very much appreciated if you found this video enjoyable or helpful